All right, welcome back to Making Picks. Uh, this is uh, our show where we go through and uh, on Statement Games make uh, some – we play the game. How are you guys doing this week? I, I butchered the opening, but, hey, man, we're, we're in another week of uh, a football. It, football is back. How are you guys feeling after last night's game? Well, I'd be feeling a lot better if uh, somebody, you know, did, didn't one of these new turkeys kind of like you know take the uh, take the Buccaneers last night with one of their picks last week? So right, right off the right off the go, we're already behind the eight ball. We haven't even started week one yet, or Sunday week one. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> well, listen, I'm, I'm actually I'm actually glad that uh, that Tampa was able to, to pull it off because if not, you know, that's uh, true. Mark, being being a Giants fan and being in, in the that's NFC true. East, you know how the Cowboys fans would have been. It would have been nonstop until next week. So I'm glad that uh, the Buccaneers ended up uh, taking it taking it to the end and kicking that field goal to win. I did predict for them to actually cover the spread at eight and a half. They didn't get it done, but a win is a win, so it's all good. They start 0-1. I couldn't be happier on this Friday morning. And we still got nine viable picks kind of like, you know, going into the the weekend here. So we're not mm-hmm. completely out of the uh, out of the money as of, as of yet. But that, that, that's kind of, you know, great. Um, but no, other than that, I'm, I'm doing good, Nathan. How's it going with you? Been good, been good. I mean, it's it's it was kickoff, uh, you know, Thursday, so I was out at the bar, uh, hanging with the friends. So you know, we're recording this a little bit early in the morning, and uh, you know, feeling it a little bit. How about you? Feeling a little bit, huh? Getting, out, getting, <laughs> getting getting after it last night. <laughs> I was getting after it, yeah. What's the uh, what's the weapon of choice? Mixed drink, beer, shots, all of the so above. So actually, it's um, so I, I'm a basic white girl, and uh, I drink pumpkin oh. in October and September. Yeah, so, I love pumpkin. And beer. Adams has That's... this amazing uh, limited beer uh, Jacko, and okay. I drink that pretty much um, exclusively during this time of year. You get the cinnamon rim on on top, or, or no? Oh no! Don't don't need that. But it's uh, it's no. I, I go for it. I got I got no problems in admitting that I go for the rim as well. Ooh, <laughs> it's delicious. <laughs> cinnamon, cinnamon. We're talking about here, Nathan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go for the rim, sure. <laughs> I guess I set myself up for that one. Fucking walked right into it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it was uh, it was good. I uh, got to reconnect with the friends, friend group, and all that stuff. Watch some football and. It was a good game, like down to the wire, and Cowboys could have won it. I mean, uh, Greg Zerline missing two field goals plus an extra point. Uh, that's a full <laughs> touchdowns worth of worth of points for them that they needed. Um, so I don't know. Do you think he, I, I'm thinking he might be uh, he might be cut, replaced, something? That's major, major. Yeah, that, that's just something if you look at it. I mean, um, especially by the uh, the small margin that uh, the Buccaneers won, those those missed uh, field goals could have definitely made a difference and would have made a difference. Um, <laughs> but I think the bigger question that we have to ask ourselves, is this the same exact defense um, that showed up and played in last year's Super Bowl win against Kansas City? Because they gave up a lot, a lot of points last night. You know, I mean, 21, I'm sorry, 28 points is a lot. Now, again, um, this is the first game of the season. And I know that usually it takes the defense more time than the offense to catch up. But for them, for every, for all the starters to be back and for them to give up that amount of points is just a very concerning to me. Well, do you think it's because they're dealing with uh, their opponent has an offensive line compared to the Super Bowl when, uh, Kansas City's offensive they were playing their what third stringers. So of course you can you can make a pretty dominant looking uh defense when uh you're you're rushing against guys that came up from the practice squad. Yeah, no, that's that's a good point. That's definitely a good point. And um yeah, I, I, you know what? I actually like uh, Dallas's game plan. They 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 pretty much didn't even go to the run at all and um took what the defense was giving them through the air and uh all the receivers, all the receivers, C.D. Lamb I had in there, um, and and you had uh, Cooper, Amari Cooper doing his thing as well. So, you know, I, I think it's too early to say that this guy's a clear uh, top five top five uh, receiver in the league this year, especially in fantasy, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Everybody was pretty happy. I saw the Twitterverse going crazy last night about that. 
Yeah. Well, look, I mean, obviously week one, in my opinion here, is the most unpredictable week of the entire kind of you know, NFL season here. Uh, give the Dallas offense kind of like a lot of credit here. I don't think on both sides of the bull here, uh, both defenses have some, I guess, tough questions that they need to be kind of like, you know, answering before you get into the meat and guts of, of week kind of like, you know, number two. And I think it also just goes to kind of like, you know, show you, I mean, you know, Mark, McCarthy is not a bit is not a bad coach, and neither is kind of like you know Aaron's and things like that. So just because I'm going to show you, when you have multiple weeks to kind of like you know, prepare an offense uh, against kind of like, you know defense here, I, I think these are things that you can kind of expect leading into a prime time game like the one that just took place on Thursday night. Oh yeah, and I would also say that if you look at last year's uh, Bucks, they they got off to a slow start. Um, I think they squeaked into playoffs and then they caught fire at the right time. And that is something that could very well happen again this year. It's not how you start, it's how you finish, right? Yep, that's exactly. It. That's it. it. It's about uh, catching fire and, and uh, you know, how you're playing in Octo- late October, early November, into December. So, all right. Well, Mark, uh, I know you have a couple of announcements, so you want to jump into those? Yeah, sure. Just go ahead and kind of like, you know, pull up my screen here. Just didn't want anybody kind of like, to be alarmed. Obviously, this is pretty exciting news for like the company. But uh, as the statement games business continues to uh, to push forward, uh, we are taking a little bit more of a proactive position here in terms of licensing our technology out to various different partners, content providers to help them address various different challenges in the sports content creation industry, fan engagement, and then also helping various different businesses kind of, you know, help casual fans become more educated on what prop betting is kind of like you know, all about here. So we announced kind of like a, a partnership kind of like, you know, with sports host. They will be white labeling like our technology. The same kind of like, you know, functionality exists. Um, and yeah, we're, we're expecting some kind of like, you know, good things with sports host as we continue to push forward throughout the rest of this year and into 2020. Um, but you can kind of like see that the, uh, the partnership has, uh, has been announced and, yeah, it's, it's something that the company has actually been working towards for, for quite a long, long time here. And we're just super excited to be able to announce our first white labeling partnership with a viable company like Sports Host. Good stuff. No, that's awesome. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So just kind of like, you know, touching it back on last night's game. Of course, we're recording on a Friday here um, and, you know, taking a look at what we were talking about last week with the first video of making picks of the 2021 NFL kind of, you know, season, there was a, you know, a pretty significant Tom Brady card that we were going to give away if somebody kind of, you know, went 10 for 10. So unfortunately nobody went 10 for 10, you know, last night. Uh, so that second half of the equation here is kind of like, you know, void, but, you know, heading into this, this Sunday, we will be diving into in more detail about the Chicago Bears versus Los Angeles Rams. Sunday night, kind of like, you know, football game. And although, you know, there's no kind of like, you know, Tom Brady card that we'll be giving away, uh, let's just come to the table with a brand new kind of like, you know, prize. It's Matthew Stafford playing kind of like, you know, on a, on, a, on a new team. Sunday night, kind of like, you know, football, new kind of like, environment here. I actually think that some of these particular prices are a bargain. And what I'm actually showing on my screen here is what his 2009 tops card number 430 had sold for in the past couple of days. You can see that this one just sold for $380 on the 6th of September. Uh, this one kind of like it was sold for 405 back on the 18th of July. Um, this one, we don't actually know what the final price was because it looks like the seller had accepted the best offer by... Uh, I guess the actual kind of like, you know, buyer, but hey, you know what? I mean, I'm looking at this one right now. This one's kind of like you know, up for 400, kind of like, you know, and 50 bucks. So we'll throw the gauntlet down and we'll make another, another challenge again here. If anybody who goes 10 for 10 with their Sunday night Chicago Bears versus Los Angeles Rams picks on statement games, which is being white labeled by sports hosts, um, look, you know, it will be my problem here, but I will go ahead and send you a 2009 tops card number 430 Matthew line working card and a PSA uh, 10. Nice. That's awesome. But here's the catch though. You got to be able, you have to be subscribing to this channel and you have to drop a comment below in the comment section with what your username is, not your real name, your, your username and who your, you know, top 10 pick is. Gotcha. There it is. Oh man, that that yeah, is a that, beauty. That's, that's where we're at. 
That is a beauty of a card. Um, I'm a big Matthew Stafford fan, and especially, um, I mean, it, it was sad seeing him go to the Rams, but now I'm looking forward to uh, hopefully a championship for him. So I think that if he gets that championship, that card's going to rise in value. So, um, yeah. I no, think it's a good awesome. sneak, kind of like, you know, buy right now. Even kind of like at that price and, hey, look, you know what, you know, um, even if – you're not looking at like the 10. I mean, maybe some of like the nines and the eights are, are a bargain, but you're, you're right. If he kind of like, you know, catches fire and this kind of like, you know, chemistry or this, uh, this equation works with Matthew Stafford and the Rams here. I mean, what do you think? Is, is he a borderline hall of fame player? If and right he's now, still yeah. got some, he's still got some tread on like on, on the tie here. So it's not like he's retiring kind of like on you know, next year, but I mean, it's hard to believe 2009 seems like yesterday. And we're already in 2000. 21. You know, to be to, to be honest uh, with you, Mark, I think that he's in a he's in a great situation. If you're looking at the offense that he uh, that he came into, and also the weapons that they have there. Listen, if Jared Goff could have success with the um, L.A. Rams, then I don't see why Stafford can't do the do the same or even um, better that right. So he's gonna um, he has the weapons there. I'm I'm really really high on uh, on Woods and also on on Cooper Cup. Um, I own a lot of shares in my fantasy uh, in my 14 leagues with with, uh, with Robert Woods. So um, 14 I'm, I'm, leagues, <laughs> 14 leagues, man. You know, I had to create right. a spreadsheet. Up. I had a, I had a, um, yeah, I had to create a spreadsheet yesterday. You know, pretty much, um, <laughs> and, and and highlight each uh, each league once I finish uh, updating them. But I think he he uh, if you look at the the weapons that he had and some of the the losses, unfortunately, and you know, Nate could probably speak to this better than I can. But it wasn't really on the offense. You know, it was just the mm-hmm. the, the defense failed them a lot a lot of times throughout the year. So um, he made it to a, a point late in his career we could get out and start fresh in a good offense. Uh, I was hoping that he could have uh, got out earlier because I watched him play when he was at UGA and he's a good quarterback. He has a good arm, uh, just needed the weapons and he needed a good franchise and ownership coach, all that from top to bottom. And, and um, Detroit just did not provide that for him. Oh yeah. That's an excellent point here. And Nathan, we talked about like this the other day here, but I'm not sure if you saw like the recent like, kind of news in the, I guess, sports trading kind of like, you know, industry, but the grading company PSA, you know, how we're talking about how it's, it's 200 bucks kind of like, you know, uh, mm-hmm. A card to kind of like you know, get graded. It looks like their express grading service has dropped like a little bit. So mm-hmm. it's actually gone from two hundred bucks to now a bargain basement price of one fifty. I mean, still, I mean, that's a lot of kind of like you know money here to get you know one of your cards kind of like you know, graded. And it, some of the things that I actually saw here, it looks like it's a it's a it's a thirty day turnaround kind of like, you know, time. But I'm assuming that's from the time that they've received your submission and entered it into a, into their system. So mm-hmm. hey, you know, if uh, for some reason you got a couple of four hundred and five hundred dollar cards, you know, hanging around here. You might want to, you know, take a look at something like PSA or something like that to get those bad boys cased up and uh, and graded for for uh, for 150 a pop now. Mm, yeah, well, I mean, I guess it's it's trending in the right direction, uh, going down, and they're not raising the price. Correct. But, uh, yeah, that's that's a uh, hefty hefty investment there to to get your grading done done up. And um, but I mean, in the end, it's worth it because your card is more valuable. Because it's it's pristine and it's set in that um, in that setting. So it's true. But yeah, let's uh, let's get into this game. Um, we're talking about the uh, Bears versus the Rams. This is the Sunday night game. Um, and what are you guys seeing for this? What do you think? Like, is this the Bears defense of old? Is Stafford remaking this offense? Uh, what's it look like? Yeah, I like I like the Rams um, in, in this game. It's just uh, you know, like again, I, I'm a, I'm a big believer in in Stafford. I'm a big believer in Sean McVay, and they got the weapons there, right? So I think he's going to be a pretty much like turnkey with the offense. Their defense is already great. Uh, I don't know what's going on with Chicago. I don't know why they insist on starting Andy Dalton um, as opposed to Justin Fields, especially um, the fact that they moved up in the draft to get him. Uh, it's pretty much just going to be at a detriment to them, especially to start off week one. So I'm all on, I'm all in, all in, all in with, uh, with the Rams in this game. Nice. Nice. What do you think, Mark? Do you think that there's, um, I mean, there's obviously the, the benefit of your, you Justin Fields being a good quarterback. Do you think that there's some amount of like 
time that they need to uh, give for his development? I mean, is Andy Dalton even possibly a good option at all? Uh, no, I don't think it's a good option at all, but I actually think it's actually a smart play by the uh, by the Bears kind of like, you know, coaching staff here. I mean, you're kind of like, you know, Sunday night, kind of like in you know, a week one, um, expecting a rookie quarterback to go into – a new, brand new football kind of like, you know, stadium. He's kind of like, you know, shown in the preseason here. There's definitely some questions whether the kid has the ability to protect himself. I was taking a look at that uh, that hit that the Bills kind of like, you know, laid on before. He's now running very kind of like, you know, basic plays, uh, some questions. And look, that's not necessarily a knock on on fields. I mean, he, he's a kid. He's a rookie quarterback. And we talked about like this league. So, you know, I just, that's just one of the reasons why I don't like kind of like rookie quarterbacks. So, let kind of like, you know, Dalton kind of like, you know, play. Let's see what kind of like, you know, Nagy does and whether he kind of like, gets the hook or not here. But, however, if you take a look at week number two, there's a big difference between going to L.A., opening up on Sunday Night Football, and then basically playing the Bengals at home in week two. So if that's the particular case, go ahead, take your lumps, take your kind of like, you know, beating week number one, get it all kind of like, out of your system, and then basically, you know, big difference, you know, start fresh at home, week number two, you're at a kind of like, you know, prime time here, and put the kid in. Well, here's the thing. Also, think about this. I mean, if, if they're going to have a reunion uh, with the Bengals and, you know, Andy Dalton was there for several years. So do you think it will be a case, depending on what happens on Sunday night where they leave in uh, Dalton and, and let him go ahead and face his, his former team? I have no idea. I mean, this guy is completely unpredictable. I mean, wasn't it like, you know, last year where basically he – uh, was on the verge of going three and zero, and then pulled kind of, he pulled Trubisky in favor of Foles, kind of like you know won the game here. But yeah. I think this coach has actually showed a track record or a history of pulling his starting quarterback even when his team is winning. Now, granted, it's not like Trubisky was lighting things kind of like you know, up here, but I would not be shocked at all on whether if if Fields kind of like you know starts in the second quarter or third quarter or. Week number two, three, can I go four? Mm. Um, we'll we'll have to can I go wait and see here. But I would not be shocked at all if Fields sees some type of playing time today or starts as early as, as week number two. Mm. Nice. All right. Well, nice. let's get into the game here and uh, and start making our picks. And uh, as, as Mark, you know, you got to take that first pick. So we'll we'll start up there, and I will do my best to remember to take two <laughs> picks when it hits me. <laughs> Well, um, look, a lot of questions come like around like Chicago here. I think there's still like a lot of questions around the Rams offense as well. However, I don't think there's any questions around the Rams kind of like, you know, defense. I mean, this team is pretty much like, you know, loaded. They're returning pretty much every single one of their starting defense with the exception of two like, you know, players. So um, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm really kind of like, you know, locking in at the game category. And um, I'm taking the Chicago Bears under 20 and a half points as my uh, as my first pick. All right, there we go. What do you think, Will? So I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, go with uh, the Rams to go over 27 and a half points for the game. There we go. Nice. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, I like that. Yeah, I think the Bears are going to start off. It's going to be tough offensively, and I don't really like their uh, defense as much as I have in the past. Uh, and Stafford and the Rams, man, they're going to light it up. Um, so I'm going to – I mean, I'll go along the same vein. Um, I think if the Rams go over and the shock and the Bears don't necessarily have to hit that 20 mark, um, total points could be over 46.5. Uh, so that'll be my first, and then I'm going to jump in here, and um, Stafford's got to show up, um, and I would say that their running game is probably not going to be what it would have been with Cam Akers, which I would have expected, you know, if there was short goal line uh, plays that um, Stafford would pass, you know, uh, just hand it off to Akers to run through. I think Daryl Henderson is going to be – more so uh, catching some some balls out of the backfield. So I want to – I got Stafford over two and a half touchdown passes. So I think he's going to be spreading the ball around, and I think he'll get at least three uh, from the air. Back to you, Will. 
So I'm going to stay right there as well. I'm going to stay with Stafford. I think that uh, uh, McVay finally has a quarterback that could go ahead and run his offense effectively. So give me Stafford over 24 and a half completions. Nice. I like that. Mark? Let's just kind of like, you know, go for the sure trifecta and stick like, you know, right there. I'm looking at it from a completely different perspective. I actually like all the picks we've actually made, the over 27 and a half points by the, uh, the Rams, over two and a half touchdowns by, uh, by Stafford, as well as the completions here. I'll add the third component, which is the over 290.5 kind of like, you know, yards here. And I'm just kind of like, you know, looking at a lot of these different variables. Week number one, Sunday night football. The state of kind of like you know, California is completely kind of like you know crazy with all this kind of like you know COVID stuff and things like that here. McVeigh is a complete kind of like, you know psychopath and nutball. Loves kind of like you know running up scores and things like that if he has an opportunity to do so. And one interesting kind of like you know, point you have all those different factors coming into play here. And sometimes I make picks because I'm extremely passionate about a pick here, but I also do things like out of spite, as which will uh, Will is going to learn pretty kind of like, you know uh, <laughs> you know learn firsthand. Nathan is well aware of this here. I'm looking at this this little this little, and I'm saying this in the in the nicest kind of like, you know, way, more because I am jealous. But I'm looking at this Sean Diasi guy, the quarterback or the co- defensive coordinator for the Chicago Bears. The guy's 38 years old. Little shit made the freaking NFL coordinating position at the age of 38. So of course I'm extremely jealous. So basically, mm. you have all those different factors. The guy was nothing but a quality control coach as well as a safety coach, and he's the one who's going to stop this high-powered kind of like a you know, Rams offense at Matthew Stafford. I don't think so. Give me Stafford over 295.290.5 yards passing. Yeah, no, I definitely like it. Uh, so, how do you want to do this? You want to do a second pick, and uh, I'll end it. Uh, well, I, I, I got two. I, I, well, I, let we'll go. You do the. What do I do? How do how do we do this here? We're already messing up. We're kind of doing a show. Snake here. snake draft. So uh, I did two. Goes up to you. You do two, and then it comes down to me for the last one. All right. Um, so if that's the case here, um, I'm definitely going to go and, and and still kind of hear your thunder. So I'm not sure if uh, you know you wanted me to do that here, but give me the Los Angeles Rams over two point five sacks defense. I like that. No, I definitely like that. All right, well, what do you I got? I know you're going to take it, but you gave me the opportunity to pick it, and, and I took it. So let me, uh, like, like I said, I'm high on Robert Woods this year. Uh, let's go over to the wide receivers here. So, again, Ro- Robert Woods is uh, somebody that, that I'm high on. So, and Cooper Cup, this is going to be one of those where they're, I think this number is very, very low. So I love it. I'm all over. Give me um, Robert Woods and Cooper Cup over two and a half combined receptions. Twelve and a half. Twelve and a half. I'm sorry, twelve twelve and a half. Twelve and a half perception. Two and a half. I mean yeah, my system's been, corrupt that's, here. That's, I mean, that's, all right, let me look at that again here. <laughs> that would have been midway through the first half. quarter. <laughs> <laughs> twelve and a yeah. half. Twelve and a half. Cool, cool. All right. Now that looks good. Um, you know what? So I'm actually gonna do yeah, I like this. So it's good, Mark, that you took the the defensive uh, pick there because <laughs> someone had to. You know, I'm part of the I- IDP guys, and you know it would just be a shame to to not highlight the Rams defense. But actually, one of my sleepers, or you know, one of my guys that I really like uh, now with Stafford at the Rams and what he does with tight ends, and you've got uh, the opportunity there for uh, Tyler Higby, I think that he can, in fact, get more than four and a half receptions in this game. It's a kind of low number. I think that's going to be an adjustment as uh, he's going to be mixed into uh, into that offense, and he's got good hands, uh, as uh, you can see from last year when he was playing – you know, he, he had a really high catch rate, and I think Stafford's going to take advantage of that and, you know, throw some passes his way. So I really like that for this game. So, uh, yeah, there we go. We've wrapped it up. We're going to leave the the mystery of the last pick so that we have some competitive advantage. Um, and uh, so if you are playing in the um, Sunday night Chicago versus Rams contest one, and you see uh, SG live, 
uh, as one of the contestants with you. Just understand you're playing against us, playing against Mark, Will, and myself, Nathan. Uh, and uh, hopefully, you know, you can win. Make sure you're playing, uh, you're watching this show so that uh, you get that opportunity at a um, the prize that Mark Mark laid out there. So how are you guys feeling going into this game with the picks that we've made? I think we nailed it this week. I'm not being yeah, biased I, at I, all. I, yeah, absolutely. I really like there our we picks. Go. There we go. Yeah, go, go, going, going off of Mark, being biased, definitely. Um, I, I like it. I feel very confident. And uh, like I said, I just think that number – uh, there, especially with the Robert Woods and uh, Cooper Cup connection um, at 12 and a half, should definitely hit. Should definitely hit. I, I'm, 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 a, I'm predicting before the fourth quarter, to be honest with you. Mm, nice. Awesome. Fair enough. All right. Well, for everyone out there, make sure that you are following on all social medias at Statement Games. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel at uh, or Statement Games uh, Inc as well as make sure you are either playing on desktop or uh, your mobile device through the app. Uh, play Statement Games every week. Uh, every day you can play Statement Games. It's, it's there. There's tons of uh, uh, contests out there. You know, just, just get into them, and, uh, and it's, it's a great game. So uh, with that, see you guys next week. See you next week.